Machine Bet argues that it has arrested a resident of Um al Fakhum who was recruited into the military wing of Hamas in the Gaza Strip and planned to carry out an explosive attack on a bus line in the Khadera area. The suspect, Mohammed Nadir, a 20 year old Israeli citizen resident of Um al Fakhum, was arrested in possession of media used to communicate with Hamas in the Gaza Strip. That's according to the Shin Bet. The investigation reveals that in light of financial and psychological pressures he was under, he began to approach the ideology of the Muslim Brotherhood and later decided that he wanted to carry out jihad. The investigation also revealed that he collected information about possible locations to carry out an attack in Israel with an emphasis on security sites and crowded places and sent the information he collected to Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Jonathan Regev, uh, I-24 News defense correspondent, joins us now here in studio for more on that. Jonathan, what does it mean communication uh, tools or methods to communicate with Hamas? Can't anyone communicate with Hamas via Skype or WhatsApp? Uh, what exactly was found? Anyone can communicate with Hamas. It's very easy today. Not anyone has uh, the freedom to travel anywhere in Israel. This man did simply because he's an Israeli resident, an Israeli citizen. As such, he has the same rights as you and me and every other Israeli citizen when we're speaking of rights of uh, movement and, 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 and filming things and, and, and traveling from place to place. Uh, Hamas has a lot of people working for them in the West Bank, but those in the West Bank are restricted. Of course, they cannot cross into Israel proper unless they have the, 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 uh, the, uh, cor the, the right authorization. Uh, Arab Israelis, they have the right, they have every other right, just like every other Israeli citizen. And we have to say that the vast, vast, vast majority of the Arab Israeli citizens are good and loyal citizens that have nothing to do with terrorism. But a few uh, are, are using uh, these uh, rights uh, for these purposes. We saw it was a bit over a year ago. Two residents also from Um al Fahim carried out that deadly attack, the shooting attack in uh, the city of Khadera, which is nearby. And now we see another resident of uh, Um al Fahim uh, also uh, 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 joining Hamas, helping them. The communication, that is quite easy. Anyone can communicate, as you said. Uh, but uh, that freedom of movement, that is something different. And this is what this man, this man specifically was uh, taking advantage of. And we have to remind our, our viewers that uh, many of the Arab Israelis have families in Gaza in 1948. A lot of Arab Israelis who lived in the center of the country moved, were expelled, uh, ran uh, no, away, and, and found themselves in the Gaza Strip or either in refugee camps or Yes, let, let's put it this way. In 1948, a, a, a border was established, which did not exist before, between what is known today as Israel and what is known as the West Bank. There's a village called Baka, for example, which has two parts, Western Baka within Israel, Eastern Baka in the West Bank. It's one village, but separated, and, and a lot of people have, uh, which are Arab Israelis, their family ties in the West Bank. The city of Jenin, for example, which we speak about very oftenly, is just a few kilometers away from Um al Fahim, which is within Israel. So, so yes, a lot of ties there, a lot of connections, and we can be sure that the terror organizations are trying to take advantage of that. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Jonathan. Now, an Iranian official says any Israeli attack on its nuclear facilities would spark a wider regional war. He spoke after top Israeli leadership yesterday sent threats towards Iran in a thinly fueled threat. Defense Minister Yoav Gallant on Tuesday said the recent fighting in the Gaza Strip pales in comparison to the complexity and difficulty of the main goal that Israel is preparing for. The missions in Shield and Arrow were carried out with great success, but the main goal, for which we are preparing, is more complex, more difficult, and more significant. You need to be prepared at any moment. Uh, Jonathan, uh, three uh, top leaders in Israel, the Prime Minister, Minister of Defense, and uh, the Chief of Staff of the IDF, all three uh, c c conveying, conveying, such a, um, conveying such a message uh, to Iran on the same day. Why yesterday? Uh, I, think, I think simply there's an understanding that something is happening in uh, Iran. Uh, the chief of staff spoke at a conference, the Erzaliya conference, and uh, you have Gallant, the defense minister, uh, at this uh, visit in, uh, in, in the Air Force base. I, I think there's an understanding uh, uh, that, that things are progressing in Iran and no one is stopping it. 
Uh, it also has implications on the northern border. Hezbollah looking for, as, as the chief of staff put it, to challenge Israel here and there. Maybe not looking for an all-out confrontation, but yes, looking for a challenge here, a challenge there, things that it did not do in the past. And there's perhaps an understanding in, in the Israeli leadership that the things are progressing and not exactly in the way that Israel would want them to progress. And Israel is looking, of course, for American support and hopefully, perhaps, Saudi support for its operations in Iran or against Iran, that's vis-a-vis -vis, uh, U.S. promises with regards to normalization in, in the area? Well, the U.S., is, the Israel is clearly looking for them, but, but will, the, the, the Saudi, will the Saudis uh, run to support Israel against Iran? I'm not sure. Let's remember. It was, what, about a month ago when, when uh, Saudi Arabia and Iran actually signed their own uh, reproachment deal. Uh, so, yes, there are constant talks about perhaps adding Saudi Arabia to the uh, Abram Accords. Uh, we're hearing the Biden administration is, is, is pushing forward for that and pushing forward for that now simply because less than a year from now the American administration will jump into the election season. Uh, uh, therefore, uh, whatever does, if it doesn't happen within, say, the next six months, uh, after that, the, 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 the President Biden and his administration will be uh, worried mostly about re-election more than about the Middle East. So yes, there are constant activities and, and constant talks about a possible, uh, a possible uh, deal that, that will add Saudi Arabia uh, to uh, the Abram Accords. It has not happened yet. And let's remember with the makeup of the, Isra the current Israeli coalition and whatever such, whatever uh, uh, compromises such a deal will require from Israel, not so sure it will happen very fast. Jonathan Ragged, defense correspondent, thank you very much. Thank you.